Let's talk about Forsaken, Project Janus, and conspiracy theories about the ending. But first, let's recap. When Valentina failed to help the Forsaken leave the Dark Aether, the Forsaken continued expanding the Outbreak Zones in the Ural Mountains. On top of that, more Outbreak Zones sprouted up in Algeria and on some ships in the North Atlantic. Omega and Requiem lost control of the Zones in the Urals. The Forsaken stayed in contact with Peck but still as Zykov and gave him the blueprints for a particle accelerator that would help Omega pull Zykov out of the Dark Aether. He promised them that he would help them take out the Forsaken if Omega could bring him home. Peck took the plans to Krevchenko and he approved it. This became Operatia Bivitel. But Peck and Krevchenko had an agenda. They convinced Zykov that Omega was going to kill the Forsaken, when really they wanted to capture him and sick him on the west like a Rottweiler. While Zykov was talking to Omega, he also made an offer to Requiem, telling them that he would help them kill the Forsaken if they rescued him first from the Dark Aether. He also notified Requiem that he made this offer to Omega as well. So, in the summer of 1985, Requiem and Omega are racing to get Zykov out of the Dark Aether first. Spoiler alert, Omega gets to him first. Zykov comes out of the portal like, yay, I'm free, but then he's like, ta-da, I was the Forsaken all along, suckers. Requiem arrived in time to see this, but there was no way they were going to be able to fight this purple people leader on their own. Luckily, Samantha Maxis showed up to help. After weakening the Forsaken, Sam flew into his gut which was also a portal to the Dark Aether and he was sucked into a big ball that Omega was going to use to capture him. Then all the outbreak zones that the Forsaken started around the world started clearing up and Weaver thanked her for her service. Also, that ball was collected by the director of Requiem and taken to some undisclosed location. Knowing the previous Richtofen's history, it's definitely not for anything good. By the way, surprise, Eddie is the director of Requiem. Anyway, this secretive director is back to DMing some group about how he has the Forsaken in hand, Sam is out of the way, they can move forward with Project Janus, and that Requiem is going to be taken care of. Which of course they are. We see Dr. Gray, Major Carver, Dr. Strauss, who really put up a fight, our strike team, and Weaver get arrested. But why? Good question. 1. Requiem is in too deep, so the director wants to cover his tracks. And 2. They were looking into Eddie's background. Major Carver had some information about the director's background and left a message for Weaver about it. The director had him wiretapped, so he heard it all. Here's a few things he said in the message. Alright, Grigori. I know it's late, but I did some more digging, and you know what I found? Next to Diddly Squat. Oh, I did find one thing. Before Requiem, he was the Associate Deputy Director of the Office of Extra Regular Activities. Apparently, it was a shadow subgroup under DSNT specializing in clandestine sciences. Now let's talk about Project Janus. On Eddie's desk is a picture of a child and a wife. This is believed to be a child that Samantha and Weaver accidentally killed. After Samantha was pulled out of the Dark Aether in Firebase Z, the director had her quarantined. While she was quarantined, she kept a diary. In her first diary entry, she wrote about the guilt her and Weaver had about the boy. And in her ninth diary entry, she wrote about when her and Weaver first met in person. After giving him some intel about a target they were supposed to take out, he went and burned the target's house down. What they didn't know was that a child was still in there. A child they thought was at his mother's house. The boy's name was Samuel. And the theory is that this was Eddie's kid who he's trying to bring back through Project Janus. Janus is a god from Roman mythology who is the god of beginnings. Mr. Dalek JD pointed out that Project Janus could be a way for Eddie to rewrite time. I suspect that he's looking for a dark ether entity that controls time and can possibly bring back Samuel. And thanks to Vanguard zombies, we now know that there's multiple elder gods in the dark ether, each with their own unique abilities. And there might actually be a way to extract these guys from the Forsaken himself. The entity called Sparagmos, who originally created the Chrysalax in the Dark Aether, wrote that the Chrysalax could make the Old Ones once more. His writing says, The devoured shall be reborn. Their scattered ashes shall be reformed. The Forsaken's torment will be undone when the Old Ones reign once more. So, this could be a possibility. Moving on to the end end of Forsaken, Peck shows up at a boat shop in Japan five years after Forsaken. He tells the owner that he wants to go to some island off the coast of Japan. When the owner asks him why he wants to go there, Peck replies with, I'm looking for some old friends. If you didn't know already, Peck and the director of Requiem are in cahoots. The director gave Peck the blueprints for the Forsaken's containment chamber I mentioned earlier that Omega was going to use to capture the Forsaken. And in return, Peck gave the director the date when Operatia Esbavitel would go down. 
I'm just telling you the date has changed, all right? June 4th. If you want him, you'll have to move fast. The Forsaken's cage has been completed to your specifications. Once Zykov gives us the creature's location, we'll extract him directly into our captivity. So, we have an agreement? Clean slate? Good. I'll let you know when. Have your men ready. I think that the director and Peck could still be working together. There are two possible explanations for why Peck pointed to that specific place. One, the location that Peck pointed to might be a rendezvous point. Even though the director offered him a clean slate, I don't think he's done with Peck yet. And two, he could be looking for the missiles that Requiem sent into the Pacific. When he says old friends, it could be literally or he meant it figuratively. This is just what Treyarch does. They throw some new information at us and the community loses their mind trying to come up with theories. Then. Two games later, we finally get an explanation. Remember, this is all speculation. These theories could be way off in the near future. And if so, I give you permission to come back in a few months and tell me I'm wrong. Let's talk conspiracy theories, shall we? So first off, from Major Carver's wiretap, it looks like the director is the leader of a different secret organization. Here's proof that this organization exists. Pause the video if you want to read these documents for yourself, but the first one is a letter from the director of Requiem to a board of directors about the events that took place in Berlin and why he didn't take advantage of the situation to get closer to his goal, Project Janus. His answer was simply that the timing was wrong, and if he acted in Berlin, it would have been disastrous to the pockets of the shareholders. The second letter is from a secretary from the president's office. It mentions West Virginia and how they had to make up a cover story to evacuate a town. This was so they could build an underground tunnel system. And some sort of wall? What? Maybe that's where they took the Forsaken? They also recently hired a handful of scientists, military, and operations personnel. This is really giving me Broken Arrow vibes. The second conspiracy theory that I wanted to touch on is there are two other guys that we were introduced to in Outbreak in Maurer that could be working for the director now, Jaeger and Gorev. Jaeger got in contact with someone who promised Jaeger and Gorev employment if they successfully transported the Forsaken's containment chamber. No doubt this mysterious contact is Eddie. This could mean it's possible they were in the helicopter that picked it up. Originally, they were supposed to take the containment chamber to Moscow for Omega, but they agreed if that plan went south, they would go with plan B. Gorev asks Jaeger if his contact can guarantee them safe passage. The only location I could see where they could be in danger right now is America. Because remember, the Cold War is still going on at this time. And the only person I know that wants that cage really badly is Eddie. So, they have an accord. Provided events transpire as you predict, then yes. I will not let that man catch me with my pants around my ankles. Uh, an image I did not need. So, the recap. First, Kravchenko and Peck free Zykov, who in turn points them to the Forsaken's location. Once they have that, they extract it from the Dark Aether and place it securely in their prison box. At which point we swoop in with our hind, as instructed, to take the cage to the facility outside Moscow. That is, if everything goes according to plan, if things fall apart... If things fall apart, plan B. Plan B, indeed. Your contact. He can guarantee our safety. We will be granted safe passage. And possibly employment, depending on how we play our parts. We are privy to a world of secrets few know even exist. In the right hands, we are more valuable alive. But... in Kravchenko's... Mm. I understand. Cheer up, God. We're the heroes in this, like your uh, spaghetti restaurant, yeah? I'm Stephen McQueen, and you're... Well, you're the other guy. Mm. You, Brenner. Exactly. The magnificent two. 